It's been a couple of months since I've actually played Lawbreakers, both on stream or off stream, just in my own personal time, and there's a couple of glaring reasons why. I still get questions about it very often, so today I wanted to very briefly run through why I have stopped playing Lawbreakers. I'm gonna make my arguments here twofold. First, we'll talk about Twitch, and then we'll talk about YouTube and how each of those things relates to my time with Lawbreakers. Well, obviously this video was first kind of most, I guess, emotionally charged by the fact that people on my stream are consistently asking me why I have stopped playing this game. And it's not really like an upsetting thing, but it's just something that I feel that if I could link them a video that goes through everything in much more detail than what I could ha like halfway absentmindedly answer on stream, then that's probably a better way of going about it. So why don't I stream this game anymore? Well, the big thing that is obviously on everyone's minds is player count. When there's only a few dozen people playing during peak hours, at least that's what it feels like a lot of the times, it's not exactly a fast process to find a game. In addition to that, with how few people there are playing the game, the skill disparity between everyone is absolutely massive. Like, if there's no tournament players on, then I am, like, far and away the best person on every server, and I am just running through everyone like it's nothing. But as soon as I hit a pro, as soon as I hit a Jamie Allegro, as soon as I hit an Aluko or a Ruff or a Rukata or any of those other guys that I'm not naming, like, as soon as I run into any one of them, they poop on me. They destroy me. So, like... All that happens on stream is either I am destroying the entire enemy team mercilessly or I am being destroyed mercilessly by a couple of tournament players who are stacking together and I just cannot possibly hope to fight against it without stacking myself and I don't want to do that because if I don't fight a stack then I'm pub stomping in a dead game and it's like there, there's no <laughs> right answer so it's just there, there is this this really awkward position that I'm put in just by even booting up the game but not not only that is is the idea that because it's so difficult to find a game I'm spending many minutes sitting in lobbies waiting for matches to be found and sometimes I'll only get two three four five maybe sometimes six people in a lobby and then we'll be stuck waiting in that warm-up lobby where you're playing on the map that you're going to be playing on and it's just you know just warm up just frag out doesn't mean anything right and then once you get enough people connected then you switch over to the proper real game starting but i'm spending so much time in lobby queues i'm spending so much time in warm-up that it almost is starting to overshadow the amount of time that i actually play the video game in an actual real match filled with you know regular players and not ju not just halfway full and it's like doesn't even really feel like an actual game like i'm spending so much time doing those things that are not lawbreakers that the little bit of time that i do have with lawbreakers is just simply percentage wise not enough well lawbreakers i have to fill in the time with watching youtube with viewers with me on twitch i have to fill that time in with montaro a side-scrolling 2d 99 cent game where you play as a uh is a shiba inu and your job is to collect as many doge coins as possible while avoiding angry cats avoiding angry birds and stealing um school girls pantsu like th th that is the game that my stream is more excited about me playing than than lawbreakers like whenever i have a lawbreaker stream no one's talking about lawbreaker everyone's talking about what's frothy gonna do next in montaro which costume is he gonna use? is he gonna play the, the dog in a box is he gonna play the Shiba Inu in a in a husky costume. Which one is it gonna be? Like, no one watches Lawbreakers. They just want to watch me play Montaro and drink beer and laugh at how stupid the game is. So like, at, at what point it, it, does my Lawbreakers stream become a Montaro stream? So or an IRL stream? Like, why am I even playing Lawbreakers? Why don't I just cut the middleman out and go straight to what the people want to see, which is me doing dumb stuff? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's. It puts me in such a strange position so often that, frankly, there's not a whole lot of point to play Lawbreakers. As much as I may like it, I have to stay away from it. Now, there's also the question of why don't I play Lawbreakers anymore for the YouTube side? Well, the reason being there is that, again, the player base is extremely small. If I spend you know, 10, 20 hours putting together a juggernaut guide, which by the way, I'm about halfway through at this point. 
if I put all the time necessary into completing that guide, who is really going to watch it? I mean, maybe my dedicated subscribers and, what, the 500 people left in the world that still play Lawbreakers consistently? Like, come on. There's no one there to watch that video and learn stuff from it. And I'm going to be spending all this time and effort going into, you know, highly technical details of, you know, how the drain drop, the range drop off works, what the spread pattern is like, which by the way, it's fixed, uh, what the damage values are at close range and far range, you know, how you could do different combos and animation cancel because Juggernaut is huge on animation cancels. It's like a whole friggin' un undiscovered world of how to play Juggernaut that people have no idea exists due to animation cancels. And I could go on and on about playing the character, but no one's going to watch the video, right? Like, it, there, I mean, it, it's nice to make it just for the sake of making it and just keep myself in practice, I suppose. But at the same time, I mean, it's an effort in futility. Like, if I want to grow my channel, if I want to continue being relevant in the first-person shooter gaming space, making Lawbreakers videos is not the way to do it. So, as much as I'd love to make those videos... It just doesn't financially make sense for me. It doesn't. It does not seem like a a smart expenditure of my time. All the time I could be spending making a Lawbreakers video. Why don't I make a Titanfall video? I mean, maybe I don't want to make a Titanfall video, but Titanfall videos will get me views and will support me, support the community that supported me in getting to this the stage that I'm at. So like, I I don't know what the right answer is, but. Lawbreakers does not seem to be the right answer. So that is why I'm not making content over there now. There's other reasons that I'm not playing it besides just the Twitch and YouTube viewership and all that. Like, I, I, I do care about the game as, well, a competitive title. And I feel that Patch 1.4 has really sullied the balance and good name of Lawbreakers. I feel like Enforcer has been made dramatically overpowered. Uh, I called this out right when the patch came out that they were massively overbuffing Enforcer and I'm pretty sure I made an entire video on the subject. Or, or rather I think I just made a huge rant about it in my patch 1.4 update video. But yeah, I, I mean I called it and it was true. Enforcer is far and away the most powerful selectable character in Lawbreakers and if you're playing in boss leagues, your best hit scan player must be playing Enforcer. Not Gunslinger, not Assassin, not Wraith. They must always, 100% of the time, be on Enforcer, just straight up. If you do not have a good Enforcer on your team and the other team does, you will lose. The rest of your composition barely matters. It's more of a war about who has the best enforcer and then secondarily who has the best battle medic or rather at least a battle medic competent enough to press e on enforcer on cooldown while pressing q at reasonable times and not dying and not feeding a whole lot that's all that they have to do like you have a good enforcer you have a competent battle medic who has a pulse and breathes and does not like sniff glue in between presses of the e button and you have a winning team like the, 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 the most typical and most powerful team composition that I found, at least in the couple of days that I played Lawbreakers after patch 1.4 before completely just throwing the game out, was that you wanted to play one Enforcer, one Battle Medic, one uh, Harrier, a Titan, and then your fifth pick was kind of more of a flex. You would usually go for like a Gunslinger or... Uh, usually Gunslinger, I think, even after the nerfs, you kind of just liked that extra hit scan damage. Plus, the, the ultimate ability was pretty alright, but I think that was pretty flexible, and I'm sure a lot of the higher level competitive players have different views and ideas, and, you know, fine, they're not wrong, they're probably more right than me, but for, if I was, like, if I had a stack of five, like, that's the team that I would run every single time, because it seemed just so much more powerful than anything else, and it removed any sense of strategy from the game for me. It removed any sense of variability. It just seemed like Every match was the same composition, and it was always a war of who was the best enforcer. Um, and then if the enforcers were equal, uh, the secondary goal was who had the better battle medic. And if both the enforcers and both the battle medics were equal, then it came down to, um, from the third point, who had the better harrier and or titan. Because that harrier's damage uh, bonus ability, the right click, uh, was very, very critical, especially with everyone's health being boosted in this patch. And, I mean, I could keep going and going and ranting and raving, but you guys get the point, is that this Enforcer meta has really just sullied the game, in my opinion, and I feel that it's just not fun to play in, it's not fun to play as Enforcer or against Enforcer, 
and it somehow is managing to be worse than the old assassin meta where you just want to run a couple of assassins and, and this is not at a competitive level this is a public level you want to run a couple of assassins and just be super obnoxious with flux grenades and just right clicking the romerus no skill no brain no aim involved just mash those abilities on their very fast cooldown do a bunch of damage while risking very little um uh damage received and it's pretty much just <laughs> it was very unfun to play against it shut down a bunch of characters completely like especially titan uh when you stacked assassins against titan there was literally nothing that a titan could do as long as those assassins were focusing on the titan and keeping their flux grenades up and alternating grenades like that titan just could not play the video game so there, there is a lot of a lot of stuff that was at play in patch 1.3 and before that was addressed in 1.4 and kudos to Bosky for fixing it but at the same time as them fixing all the bad stuff, they completely ruined the game by buffing Enforcer to the Moon. And two months later, actually more than two months now, uh, they have failed to adequately address the issue. Um, in this most recent update, they lowered the Aerator's max damage from 25 to 23. Not good enough, guys. That is not enough of a damage change to make the game feel better or to make Enforcer feel less oppressive in the metagame. That is adding anywhere between one and maybe four, if I'm being generous, bullets to kill on most uh, most situations. But, I mean, really, it's going to be closer to, like, like one or two 90% uh, of the time. So, like, it doesn't make a difference when Enforcer pretty much always has that turbo boost on. They're always shooting at an increased fire rate of what effectively feels like nine quadrillion rounds per millisecond. Like... Just firing, the fire rate is really fast, the damage is really high, even with the nerfs, it's still really high. Something needs to be done, but at this point, I'm not sure that it really matters, because the game has so few players left, and the game has so much ill will from the gaming community at large, that I honestly, and I've said this on stream, and it's not a hit on boss key at all, so please don't take it as one, but I honestly don't see the point in boss key continuing to develop and update this game. I strongly feel that come December, once they finish off that, that hero that they're working on and a couple of those maps, that they should just just call it done, you know? Maybe you have a couple like a couple people, a skeleton crew, who come back to it and just maintain the game and make sure that servers are still working right and that all of the people that are still playing can continue to play and, you know, get their value for their money that they that they spent and invested in boss key. But I honestly think that at this point there's no no real point in trying to save lawbreakers or in trying to support it or trying to do anything like that because the gaming community has decided lawbreakers is a dud they decided that they don't like cliffy b and anything with his not with anything that has his name on it they don't like and don't want to support so in the long run why should boss key continue to develop this game why should they spend time and effort on it it's probably a negative defeatist attitude to have but i i just don't see the value i don't see what they could possibly do to suddenly make Lawbreakers succeed. I don't think that it's ever going to happen. So, if I, I don't know, if if I was the King of Bosky, I'd be developing a new game. I'd be starting over and just kind of leaving Lawbreakers and say, okay, you know, we tried, we had fun. There was a handful of people that really liked it, but a lot of people didn't. So, what can we learn from that to make our next game better and then just go from there? So, I really hope that's what Bosky is doing. I do hope to see more stuff from them in the future because... I've met a lot of the people there. They're some of the coolest developers that I've met from any studio, and I've I've seen a handful now. So uh, they're they're really great people. Um, they seem to have a really really amazing dynamic uh, at the studio. Just judging by interactions I've had with the with the developers and people that work there, uh, alongside their Twitter interactions, like they just the, the amount that these people seem to hang out and just have fun and just be real friends outside of being developers of Boss Key. Um, and how their weirdness all seems to to meld together is really inspiring. And, and I do want to see more stuff from them in the future. But, guys, I just can't give Lawbreakers any more time and effort. I, I, I don't feel that it's worth it for the developers. I don't think that it's worth it for me. I think that it would behoove all of us if we all just, uh, you know, moved on. So this feels like a really awkward breakup all of a sudden. I don't know why. But, uh, I mean... I just wanted to give you guys my take. You know, I get this question a lot, like I said before. I wanted to answer it in my typical rambling long-form way, and I hope that this was uh, insightful for you, uh, and I hope it answers all of your questions about Lawbreakers. I do still love the game, but just can't fathom playing anymore. So anyways, guys, I'll leave you with that. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me and supporting me. I hope that you can learn to like some of the other content that I put out that's not Titanfall and not Lawbreakers. I'm, I'm I don't know. I, I, I've been in a, in a funk lately, I'll, I'll say. And I've been trying to make other stuff. And some of it was successful, a lot of it's not. So I'm trying to find my feet still here on Twitch. Or I'm sorry, here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch. So we'll see what happens, guys. Um, again, thanks for watching. Hope you stick with me. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.